Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, uh, we are going to now discuss in this particular lecture about analysis and part 2. In the previous lecture we have discussed the basic uh, selection retrieval functions and, uh, and uh, later on the classification especially the reclassification techniques uh, of both vector and raster data as per our requirement based on their attributes. In this particular uh, discussion we will have a uh, more advanced functions of uh, GIS analysis as you, rec you can recall that uh, we have completed 1 and 2 in the GIS analysis uh, 1 lecture. Now we are uh, we will be looking more on the overlaying operations. Uh, when uh, initially when uh, GIS started developing as uh, you can recall by Roger Tomlinson and later on when then commercial softwares started coming in the market people uh, because they were very strong on vector data and uh, people developed uh, some uh, some perception a wrong perception that it can only perform overlaying operations. So, overlaying operations on vector data as well as on raster data it is possible, but uh, when we were uh, discussing about the comparisons of vector data and raster data at that time uh, we have seen that uh, overlaying over uh, using the vector data up uh, to some extent is all right, but uh, when you if you involve many uh, many maps uh, vector maps and then overlay then the the output will have so many polygons that then interpretation or uses of such maps become very difficult. Whereas in case of raster data there is no limit and uh, overlay operations can very easily be performed on uh, raster maps and a lot of modeling and analysis functions. Uh, can be done over raster data. So, which we are uh, focusing this particular one on overlay operations. Uh, in later part we will also discuss uh, regional transformation and measurement in this lecture and also uh, neighborhood operations we will be discussing in this lecture. So, let us start with the overlaying operations and uh, as you know that uh, we have gone through the uh, mathematics uh, which is based on the set theory and in our 10 plus 2 classes and uh, which is based on the Boolean logics or Boolean operators and this is also called the Wayne's diagram uh, where we know that uh, A intersection V how in a simplified form and uh, this is how it will look and uh, A union B or A exclusion B, A negation B this is how different scenarios will come. These are the logical operators which are used uh, through softwares and you get different results. But this example is very simple example where say two maps are having one polygon each. But in real operations uh, say if I take even example of two maps, two maps uh, might be having polygons say one map might be having 20 polygons another map might be having 30 polygons. So, this operation becomes complicated however, the fundamentally it is just based on the same set theory or boolean operators. So, the uh, that uh, the mathematics which we have learned earlier is now going to be used. However, when we were going through all this uh, set theory or Wayne's diagram boolean logics at that time we never thought that this is how the mathematics which we are learning that uh, that time will be used later in GIS. So, this this is a very powerful tool uh, within GIS this is one of that uh, become uh, you know function which we put them in under the function of logical functions. So, uh, this uh, overlaying operations as I have already mentioned can be performed on both types of vector data as well as raster data. Uh, overlaying operations uh, are difficult to perform on 10 data. Now, here a very a simplest example has been taken here that uh, if a map uh, is having just 2 units, another map is having 2 units then when we overlay or intersect uh, uh, these or make a union of these maps then uh, 4, uh, four uh, uh, units uh, uh, turn up. So, you know it is basically multiplying here and uh, if uh, these would have been many many polygons in one map then uh, you know the output map will have uh, you know few might be few hundreds polygons. So, uh, in case of vector this is the difficulty, but in case of raster 
and this is not difficult. However, even if I have to handle in vector and uh, hundreds of polygons comes and the my map becomes complicated as in previous lecture we have seen that we can resort uh, before we present these maps to say decision makers, we can resort to the reclassification and based on certain attributes we can reclassify such output maps and can reduce the number of polygons and can make map those maps very very useful. So, no problem even if you have to handle uh, with vector data and there are uh, there are other analytical tools in combination you can apply and achieve uh, good results. Uh, similarly, a vector overlay here is a basically uh, your table get uh, or the attribute table get appended and uh, this is how uh, we address that that this map A is having 2 units, map B is having 4 units. We end up with uh, more number of uh, polygons here and uh, then your table becomes further enriched and this is how uh, you uh, start getting things there. So, you can then later on classify or reclassify your map, you can reduce the number of uh, uh, polygons and uh, still you can use those maps and make uh, senseful interpretations out of those maps. Uh, there are some uh, offshoots of uh, the basic uh, 4 uh, uh, Boolean logical functions. So, you can have even a uh, you know other functions like impose, stamp, join, compare and uh, there are other other functions which a very common function which also use is a cliff function or extract function. And as shown here that uh, there is a input coverage which is having uh, this these kind number of polygons and there is a cliff coverage the coverage which we are going to use to clip the map 1 with the input map. So, when you overlay on this then you get this intersect map is like this. So, this basic functions are being used, but their new names have been given so that they becomes much uh, easily understandable. The similar clip or extract functions can also be performed on your raster data. Suppose you are having a digital elevation model and shape of your overall shape of your digital elevation model of an area is rectangular. Now, you want to extract that digital elevation model only for a say political boundary say uh, based on certain district boundary. So, you want to show only the elevation model of the district. So, what do you need to have as a input you need to have a clip instead of a circles here you, you can have the polygon of that district. And uh, then when once you intersect or uh, use this a uh, clip or extract term uh, function then you can extract only for this area. But remember that uh, uh, the other uh, out of uh, this circle your digital elevation model is still will have uh, data, but it will be as a no data. So, only the, the elevation model below that polygon boundary would be visible nothing is visible. Similarly, you can also perform instead of polygons you can also perform on line data. So, again in clip coverage is the same as in the previous example this was the polygon data here is the line or polyline data and uh, you can extract even line data. Similarly, you can also extract in the from point data. So, I earlier gave example in the GIS analysis one that if you are having blazes of India where will be thousands of blazes and uh, you want to extract or make a subset of those blazes. So, you need to have a a clip boundary and that has to be the polygon. So, if you use the polygon and uh, then through this clip or extract or intersect functions you can extract only villages which are falling below that polygon. So, maybe a of a state or maybe a district or block whatever is the requirement accordingly this function can be used. So, this is based on simply your uh, Boolean logic. Also, you can have a, a other functions like erase function. Uh, so, again input map is same uh, this uh, erase coverage is same. Now, below this everything is gone and only you are having now uh, the remaining part same with the line data and uh, same with the point data. So, depending on your requirements you will use the appropriate tool and perform the analysis. Union also the same thing that uh, you want to merge everything whichever is available whatever in the two 
maps or more than two maps then you can use the union function input union this one so the output will have everything another example here that uh, this input is this a map here the and the union cover is this so you end up with this so uh, it depends on for what you are uh, so this can be used as a merging of polygons as well merging of two maps and uh, it may be on polygon maps it may be of uh, your uh, polyline map or even point data uh, again union functions for polygons are shown here and uh, that the everything in whatever was present in these two maps have uh, been unioned here the operator which you will use or so whatever present uh, or and uh, input means map uh, map a or map b then you end up with this kind of thing and your attribute table will become further rich and it will have whatever is available was in map 1 or 2 uh, that will be included in your attribute table as well and then intersect which is a end function end operation of boolean logic when two coverages are overlaid only portion of the input coverage that falls inside the intersect coverage will remain in the so this example we have also seen in detail and uh, the example is here also identity identity function can also be used uh, which is everything located within the boundaries of input coverage is collected into the output coverage the boundary of the output coverage is identical to the input coverage and then identity procedures applies to point line polygon coverages also you can apply on the raster data but uh, remember that on tin you cannot perform these operations now raster op overlays examples are here and uh, you can perform on raster layers all arithmetic operations four basic functions are given here plus minus multiply and division then relational functions greater than equal to less than functions and then logical operators based on boolean logic and or xor or not all these function can also be used also in addition to these conditional functions if then else another important thing that all these four basic kinds of functions can be used in combination as well so you can uh, make a complicated syntax or complicated query to the system for overlay but one thing one has to remember that uh, if you make a very complicated query or a, a such a overlaying uh, operate during overlaying operations or the output map which it, it will create generate you have to understand or someone has to understand that one so it is generally in a, a, the good practices and uh, don't bring too complicated syntax or this uh, overlaying operations at the very first go you can do it in stages wise so that if you have involved two maps you have uh, used certain or say arithmetic operations after that as said also after this first step instead of going uh, in one go you can do it in four steps and e in each step you can check for errors so therefore you would have more comfortable and more confidence in your outputs once you achieve and the and the results so a uh, step by step is much better approach than going in just one go because then things may become uh, complicated to interpret such maps and uh, arithmetic operations examples are here there is a map 1 map 2 they are having all different uh, attributes here so if uh, i if i say that map c should be equal to map a plus 10 so simple arithmetic operation and i want to add 10 value to each of these cells so this has been done here very easily similarly i want to add map 1 and map b so i say map c should be equal to map a plus map b so this is you can check it like uh, the top left value was uh, map a was 5 this is map b 4 so this uh, this should be done because this is a very simple example where you are having just 4 by 4 uh, cells in real one you might be having thousands of rows and column raster map and uh, then values are not visible as such they will be visible through a color or range of colors or in a continuous fashion so once you do a simple operation 
first check the value because if I have instructed that add 10 to everything then check at least one or two points whether things have been done accordingly or not. Similarly, if I have added two maps A and B then I should check whether it is giving correct results or not. And like I can also perform a little complicated one that map C2 should be equal to uh, in uh, map A minus map B divided by, by uh, map A and B multiply by 100. This is kind of creating a indices or a index like this. So, by this if you now you have put a little complicated syntax. So, at least for few locations randomly selected location you must check whether the results are coming correctly. Otherwise, later on in if I use this map as a input insert some other analysis and it is carrying wrong in, uh, wrong results then I will end up with a, a really confusing outputs. So, the, the best approach is go one by one step by step. Now, a function example of relational function here is the example is given for uh, greater than and uh, this map A and map B are the same example as in case of previous example. Now, uh, instruction is output map uh, should have map A if a, a map A cell value is greater than B then if it is true then give value 1 otherwise 0. So, let us interpret this map. See map A here the 5 value is definitely greater than 4 and therefore, it is true and uh, it is getting value 0. Let us see the example of uh, bottom right corner that is the value 6, 6 is uh, definitely less than 8 and it is that is why it is false. So, it is assigned 0. Now, the output is in binary form. So, once the output comes uh, you should be ready that because the condition which you have put, uh, put forward here uh, then accordingly a map will be generated and this is a simple binary map to understand. So, likewise uh, such uh, functions relational functions in combinations can also be used with other functions. Now, Boolean logic or we also sometimes use a uh, truth table uh, because uh, which is false which is true that can be done. So, here uh, the examples are shown that uh, attributes input and output uh, here and operations are here. So, if A and B are there then A and V and uh, intersection union and all this uh, are there and uh, then you can create a table to understand that if it is true then it will get value 1, if it is false it will get value 0 and accordingly you can create a table for your understanding uh, uh, like map which will output map which is going to be in binary form. Uh, another uh, uh, example the real one example is that here uh, of a end statement is that that if uh, here the land use equal to forest the condition is that uh, in this land use map search the land use which is showing the forest or which is having attribute forest and in slope map search the slopes which are having steep slopes. So, when these two conditions will satisfy only for those areas the selection has been done and the rest areas are getting one single color. So, likewise you can put conditions. So, this is telling that a here the land use is forest and the slopes, uh, slopes are very steep here and in remaining areas these two conditions are not getting satisfied and therefore, nothing is there. And why we are getting white because here uh, there is a data, there is a blank data that is why we are getting white otherwise uh, there should have been only two colors. So, this is the basically where the conditions are have not been applied in remaining areas conditions have been applied. Now, relational and logical operations together you can uh, uh, put together and like here uh, that uh, relational and logical operations here is the map A, map B and different categories of say forest and uh, their uh, values are given here and uh, say so we declare that map D uh, should be equal to map A when the forest uh, uh, is the category in map A and in map B it is less than 
500. So, when uh, now the two operations one is the rela relational another one is the logical both are there and uh, you know in combination. So, then your output map would be like this again all will come in binary form. So, 0 for false 1 for true likewise you can create as complicated as you can think. However, as I have mentioned earlier that if you create a complicated uh, 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 overlaying operation the output map you have to understand first. You have to satisfy that whatever I have put here whether it is coming correct or not. Secondly, in real operations one has to also remember the brackets where the bracket is getting open and closed because if you do not take care then some map will get uh, you know their calculations elsewhere and uh, then output maps would become very difficult to use or interpret. So, these cares have to be taken and therefore, it is better to go step by step. Uh, now, conditional functions are here that a map C here uh, should be equal to if map A is equal to forest true or uh, say undefined as well because here we do not have any information. So, that can also be used as undefined. So, likewise in map C we are getting areas which are undefined. So, this thing can also be used as in earlier examples the white areas we are coming in a map. So, these are the undefined area rest is satisfying when because this map is always having forest it is satisfying therefore, the first condition and therefore, it is true and everything is getting one remaining areas are undefined therefore, they are a, a question mark value has been assigned. Similarly, here that map C if map A is forest and map B equal to 700 1 0 1 for true 0 for false. So, it is coming accordingly. So, on one map, two map, uh, multiple maps you can perform similar. And uh, there are also cross tables we call or cross operations are possible. Uh, like here that uh, we can involve that uh, in cross table we are multiplying forest multiply by alluvial forest multiply by sale and so on and so forth and therefore, the cross map will have these attributes as well. Basically, these operations will uh, of course, you will get a map because there is a dynamic linkage hot linkage between your spatial objects as well as attribute data. But your in such after these operations the major changes will occur mainly in the attribute data or tables that is why these are also called cross tables. So, depending on your requirements you will go for these operations all these four major types of operations which are available uh, during your overlay analysis. Now, you can also go for two dimensional tables like here the categories are alluvial and sale here the categories are forest grass and lake. So, this uh, this kind of matrix uh, uh, can also be developed that uh, this is a land use map. So, land use map is having forest, uh, grass and lake and geology map is having uh, just two types of geology alluvial and shale. So, when uh, you, uh, you, you can create a output map which are say if this condition is uh, like if it is alluvium and forest then it is suitable if it is alluvial and grass not suitable, if it is alluvial and lake it is not suitable. Similarly, for different uh, uh, type of geology say shale and uh, forest not suitable, but shale and grass it is suitable. So, these in this uh, two dimensional table two at uh, two conditions at uh, two places suitable things are there and then you assign that one when you go for this. So, these two dimensional tables initially or this matrix can be developed and this matrix will be used uh, in your analysis in overlay operations and the input would be land use and geology. So, likewise lot of uh, uh, different types of analysis using those four basic operations overlaying operations can be performed. Uh, matrix overlay this uh, that I have already given example involves combining two maps layer at a time the two dimensional table is formed with attributes values of the two maps placed along row and column and then output values of each combination of values is controlled by the operator. And so, that uh, another example is given here that there is a land use map, there is a soil map, there is a now two dimensional table 
and uh, uh, say here the attributes are ABC, another attributes for land use are 1, 2, 3 and you end up with this similar kind of map. It, it becomes much easier because here it uh, you can develop this uh, two dimensional table and think before you submit for overlaying operations. Index overlay is also possible like here in this uh, overlay operations one can overlay up to and 15, 20 layers in a single operation. The user can assign ranks or weightage to individual maps as well as to their attributes. So, if uh, suppose you are working uh, for the groundwater exploration, you know that lithology is very important. So, you can assign more weight to lithology whereas, uh, you may say the soil is not that important. So, you can assign for a soil layer less importance. And similarly for the, maybe for the slope maps, maybe for lineaments or geological structures depending on their influence in a particular area you assign the weight and this way you can create also outputs. So, uh, you know the uh, different weights for different categories of uh, different types of maps and for different categories within each map accordingly you can assign and then final map can be created which will give you and the better understanding say about the groundwater condition of that area. So, all these are also possible. And now we come to the fourth uh, analysis operations uh, which is a regional transformation or measurement. In, in, in this particular uh, operation what basically is uh, measurements are done and then we uh, you know add uh, in our attribute table or do some other. Uh, you know operations. So, like uh, measurements simple line and uh, if it is a polygon then we can measure the perimeter area and uh, if uh, there are points then some different type of analysis the distances between points or pattern distribution pattern of points that kind of analysis plus random selection random generation of points can also be done in this type of operations. And uh, similarly, uh, like here uh, that uh, you know we are having a different category. So, we can have we can do the calculations of area, we can do the calculation for area uh, perimeter, we can assign different attributes there. Now, the last in this particular lecture uh, about uh, analysis operations is neighborhood operations and uh, these neighborhood operations will look the values in the surroundings as per the given. Uh, conditions by the operator or GIS users and then. So, basically these evaluate the characteristics of an area surrounding a specific location and the size search area and other things is de depends on the user requirements, the project requirements. So, in this one, one is interpolations functions. So, interpolation techniques we have already discussed. So, in this particular lecture, I am not going to in detail about the interpolation and uh, topographical functions which we will discuss and of course, the search functions we have been anyway discussing all this. So, in neighborhood operations as mentioned involve the creation of new data based on the consideration of roving window, moving window or neighboring points about selected target locations. The similar technique also exists in digital image processing or remote sensing data where we call as spatial filtering. There also a two dimensional matrix may be of 3 by 3 pixels or may be by 5 by 5 any odd number or 7 or 9, 9 by 9 are used and these roving or moving windows move throughout your data, raster data and calculate the value depending what kind of weight you have assigned for the to calculate the central value. Now, whenever you use uh, these uh, neighborhood operations using roving or moving windows uh, on the margins at least one row, first row, first last row, first column and last column no calculations will be done because if it is 3 by 3 then you will have uh, first row and last row and uh, uh, left most column and right most column no operations will be done. If it is 5 by 5 then there will be two rows on top and bottom, two rows on left and right. So, the number becomes larger than number of rows and columns which are will not be involved for analysis will be accordingly. 
So in three by through, uh, three by three um, roving or uh, roving or moving windows, you will have uh, just uh, one uh, top line and bottom line and uh, left column and right column. No calculations will be done. And they evaluate uh, uh, this uh, these uh, roving windows. Maybe three by three will evaluate the characteristics of an area surrounding a specified target. Let me give you an example. Suppose your window is say three by three. So, what you do basically you can assign a weight for this. So, if I say I say the weight is equal to all should be 1. So, this is one type of design of window. A window of different type can be designed which will have a some directional weight and like I can say that here is minus 1, here is minus 1, this will have 1, 1 and say 0, 0, 0 something like this. So, you can assign even directional weights as well using a, a, these uh, roving windows. So, they will evaluate. So, evaluate characteristics of an area surrounding a specified target location. Here target location is 3 by 3. So, if uh, MA, my input raster is larger, so for the central pixel it will search this 3 by 3, one, one row, one column uh, all around that area. And depending on the weight which has been assigned to these uh, cells of my matrix, there the new value will be generated. This is what it says. The neighborhood operations involve the creation of new data. It will create the new cell value or pixel value depending on the weights which I have given in my matrix which is a two dimensional maybe 2 by 2, uh, maybe 3 by 3, 5 by 5, 7 by 7 and any odd number. Now, in all neighborhood operations, it is necessary to indicate one or more target locations. Generally, it is single target location that is the central cell or pixel. The neighborhood operation considered around each target and the type of functions to be executed. Now, type of functions, this means we are talking about the weights, maybe minus, maybe plus or you want to multiply and so on, on the attributes within the neighborhood. And in a raster, one single attribute is there. So, this will be done for all those wherever this will move one by one. From starting, leaving in case of 3 by 3, will leave the uh, first row and first column. And then that means it will start from uh, sec, uh, the pixel of uh, uh, second column and second row. Likewise, it will go all around in the on the entire raster data set. And uh, then the typical neighborhood operations in GIS are interpolation. So, we have seen in interpolation, we have uh, there we, we have discussed the search windows, we have discussed the weight assigned to the search window and so on and so forth. So, in interpolation, we also uh, use these neighborhood operations uh, over the say digital elevation model to drive certain topographic uh, features or topographic uh, outputs from a map like a slope map, aspect map, gradient map. So, all these will be uh, considered under topographic functions which we will see very soon in little detail about those. And then finally, the search functions, they are also will search the neighborhood and this is how the neighborhood functions. Interpolation we have already covered uh, that uh, you know that uh, in order to for completeness uh, within this uh, module of this lecture, I am just very briefly going through interpolation that it estimates the unknown value at a unsampled sites using known values of existing operations and uh, there are uh, different exam uh, you know different types of interpolation. You can use the uh, point data as input or you can do the line interpolations, but basically in line interpolations what it will be done first in, a, in within a given GIS software, the polyline is first converted into points and then points are used for interpolation. But uh, certain softwares will allow you to input as a polyline, but uh, some softwares may not allow. If they do not allow, there are tools available. You can convert any time a polyline data into point data and then you use for interpolation. Now, topographic functions. Uh, so, before that we have to uh, little bit understand what is basically topography. Topography is the surface characteristics uh, of, a, uh, of a terrain and uh, these characteristics can be slope, relief and form of an area which are referred as topography. 
So, if a, you know when we say that if a area is completely flat, we do not see any features. So, that we call as a flat topography. When the topography is having lot of undulations, valleys, hills and ridges, we call as a rugged topography. So, because in in the in case of rugged you will have slope relief aspect and all those things were there and topography of a surface can be represented very easily in a digital elevation model and these what are digital elevation models what are what are different types of digital elevation models available what are how to evaluate the quality of digital elevation model which we have discussed in some previous lectures so let's look that uh, as you know that uh, and DM represents a topographic surface if it is a carrying the elevation value a typical DM in terms of a set of elevation values measured at finite number points and contain terrain features of geomorphological importance such as valleys, ridges, peaks, pits etc. And DM are commonly you know they are organized in the grid form they are typical raster and uh, a uses of such thing becomes much easier in GIS softwares using our computers because they uses the uh, you know uh, all the functions which are available for matrix analysis and due to their fixed spatial resolution regular grids are not adapted to change in the relief roughness. So, in this here uh, the uh, our raster is fixed uh, the resolution is fixed that means the cell size is fixed. So, whereas the tin is adaptable to relief roughness and uh, the use of a smaller sizes one option is that we go for higher and higher spatial resolution dm but uh, there have will be a one limit also so that that also we have discussed that what should be the higher spatial resolution where we should stop so that we have also discussed in previous class and uh, this uh, triangulated irregular network which is also a one way of representing terrain that too we have discussed in detail and uh, this uh, definitely tin is having o advantage uh, because it can accumulate your uh, relief roughness and uh, it will it is adaptable. So, the unit which, which are triangles in case of tin uh, they will change the size and shape according to requirements, but in case of a regular grid or raster and uh, the cell size is fixed. Now, uh, you know that uh, to calculate topographic functions we use the uh, uh, elevation values and the typical topographic uh, uh, transformations or functions which are used like slope which is rate of change of elevation, gradient maximum slope is called gradient and then aspect the direction of slope with reference to north. These are the topo uh, typical topographic uh, derivatives which we drive from using a digital elevation model in GIS. Very easy to drive all this. There are already standard functions are available and if, uh, uh, these can be used and immediately you can drive. The one thing you have to remember whenever you are calculating the slope because uh, uh, slope what it says the rate of change of elevation. So, that means that uh, change of elevation as you move horizontally and uh, there. So, this is scale both is scale that means the horizontal is scale and vertical is scale has to be same. If it is not same then you have to use a factor multiplying factor which will change one scale. So, generally what we do we change the elevation to the uh, mapping units because uh, this x y scale horizontal scale is generally in mapping units. So, we change that vertical scale into mapping units because there is a one to one relationship this has to be remembered. So, a function a factor has to be used according to the location of your uh, as per the different latitudes uh, because earth is not perfect spot there are these therefore, this complication is there plus the scales are different horizontal scales generally in will be in geographic coordinates whereas, vertical scale that means elevation values uh, most common is in might be in meters. So, you have to convert if you are having your horizontal scale or maps are say in UTM in meters then this issue will not come. So, topographic functions to calculate values that describe the topography at a specific location and a neighborhood is used to characterize local terrain 
and typical examples are slope calculation and aspect calculation. Now, uh, using uh, uh, these uh, GIS, you can drive slope in two ways, one based on the degree and one based in the percentage. Very simple concept here, uh, say 10 theta that is rise over run, you know. So, that uh, uh, this 10 theta, this is calculated. So, as you move, uh, uh, that, that is why the, these two scales have to be same. So, here I can drive in a, say here uh, the degree of slope is 30 whereas uh, in percentage it would be 45 because in case of degree it is between 0 to 90 in case of uh, percentage it is going to be 0 to 100 and therefore uh, for different like here uh, it is uh, 30 percentage 58 and here 45 percentage 100 and so on so forth depending on your requirement you can either choose degree or percentage. Later on also one can transform from one to another, but uh, this is a very easy calculation in any standard GIS software. Now, aspect is the orientation of a slope surface with reference to the north. So, that can also be calculated generally in by default you will get the output which will show aspect in 8 directions starting from north uh, to uh, north northwest. Likewise, so let us see the example of a slope, uh, slope map in terms of degree it is given. So, this is my input uh, digital elevation model which is showing a continuous values low to high and when it is subjected to slope map as per the concept which we have just discussed, it has calculated the slope. So, red areas are showing slopes between 70 to 78. Now, depending on your requirements as we have discussed in GIS analysis 1 that reclassification can be done and you can say classify between 0 to 20, 21 to uh, 40 and so on so forth. So, number of classes in your output map can be reduced if, if at all those are required. So, this brings to the end of uh, uh, GIS analysis uh, 2 and uh, in the next lecture we will discuss further GIS analytical operations. Thank you very much.